Good afternoon, this is David Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire. And we're pleased to be back with you making some videos again. We had an awesome time going to Dirt Time 09. And uh, it was a great trip. Dave and Steve and Lance uh, were tremendous partners to be with. We had a good time on the way out, which you can see the video up on Dave's YouTube of our trip on the way out. When we got to Dirt Time, we had some incredible instruction. Of course, Dave was teaching. We also had the likes of Ron Hood, uh, Alan Halcon, Christopher Neergis, we had Paul Campbell, and many, many other instructors out there who are really world famous and uh, were people that knew what they were doing and were giving us some incredible instruction and tips and techniques. So overall, it was an incredible nine-day journey, but we missed you guys, and we're glad to be back to make some more videos with you. I picked up a couple of things while I was out there at Dirt Time. Uh, California is far different. While we were out there, uh, I think the temperature of the last day that we were there on Thursday before we, we left on Friday to come home, I had my little thermometer on my e-kit sitting in the direct sunlight and it was 118 degrees. The temperatures ranged from there to at nighttime down to around the 50 mark. So we weren't quite prepared for that kind of cold at night. They told us it was going to be about 65, but we made it through and uh, we made a few adjustments, got out our wool blankets that we had bought with us, and had a great time. So let me show you a couple things that I picked up while I was in California. The first things that I got, being that I like fire so much, was a pile full of mule fat spindles. These are going to make great hand drills. So while we were out there, Alan Halcon and I were playing with mule fat on ash. And uh, I get a fire in about 12 seconds. That's the, the combination that Alan did his fire in two seconds with. So I got a quite a ways to go. But it's a good combination and it really works well. I also cut some of the uh, thicker mule fats uh, as well. And these will make good bow drill spindles. So I've got enough bow drill and hand drill spindles to go quite a, a long way. Some people might have trouble or a problem using things that are not indigenous to your area. But you know, back in the olden days, that's exactly what trading was all about. Natives would go hundreds of miles. They would scout out and they would find other tribes and they would trade with them. So you might have a tribe from the north come down and bring obsidian or a tribe from here in Missouri bring some flint out and they would trade for things like mule fat or different items that were useful that they couldn't get in their particular local area. Uh, some of the other things that I got were as interesting as well, so let me show you that. Another interesting plant that I found while I was out in California was called mugwort. Now, this plant grows about a foot to two and a half foot tall and has live uh, leaves on the top, but it holds the dead leaves on the bottom. And what you do is just run your hand up the stalk and strip it, and you get a bunch of uh, the dead leaves and roll them between your hands. What makes this interesting is that this is an incredible coal extender. This will catch fire with flint and steel or with a ferro rod very easily. I'm just going to do it with the lighter today to show you how it works. And you don't have to see if I can get this with the fire, with the wind blowing out here. Okay, you get that started and that's going to keep going. It's going to burn. What the natives would actually do is build a cigar out of this. You can see that burning now. See the smoke. They would build a cigar that was about a foot or two long out of leaves and then they would just simply wrap it and they would carry their fire with them from one place to another. But you can also use this as a coal material. So you can see if I occlude a lot of the air that will continue to burn but at a much slower rate. So they would carry that to start their fires instead of having to start a new fire. And when you get to the end of your trail for the day, you simply put this into a little bit of tinder, blow it into flame. An awesome plant. So I got some mugwort while I was out there. Uh, I was also given two really nice gifts while I was in, in, in California. The first was this neck knife. This is, of course, a mora from Sweden. And uh, this is a carbon, a high carbon knife. Uh, Dave Canterbury sells these on his website, and in fact, that's where I got this one from. And uh, inexpensive little knife, 12 to 15 dollars, I think. 
It's got a great handle on it, made out of wood. It's very comfortable, and it makes a nice little neck knife. I threw a little loop on here that would hold it in so that it wouldn't come out and get lost on me. I got another knife given to me by a gentleman named Sig, who is a craftsman uh, of, of everything that he puts his hands to. I asked him one day to help me. I was carving out a spoon for my little girl while I was out there, and would he show me how to use the crooked knife? And so uh, he gave me this crooked knife, and I want to thank you, Sig, for that. So we had a great trip to California, came back with some souvenirs. It's good to be back home with our family, not only our family here on the land, but all of you as well. We missed you guys, missed putting out videos, and we're going to be getting right back to work with our first video this afternoon. So thank you for your support. Thank you for being with us. Hope that you've had a great week while we were gone, and we look forward to some more videos that you'll be able to watch in the very near future. This is Dave Wonder with Bushcraft on Fire, hoping that you have a great day.